Hi, what you're looking at is a reasonably scruffy IM3303 master station. This particular one was sent in by a customer and it was manufactured in 1995. And I think I'm going to entitle this video New Tone IM3303 Common Failure Mode Number 4 Question Mark, Question Mark, Question Mark, or is it? I've been working and repairing 3303s since they came out in 1994. So that would make it roughly 25 years. The list of the 10 most common things that go wrong with 3303s is pretty solid and pretty well developed at this point. And the things on that list that we track cover probably 90 to 95 percent of all the 3303s that we get in whether they're IMs or IMAs. Usually you can find the related problem on it based on the circumstances of what happened to the system. It's a pretty good list. We rely on it quite a bit. One of the other things that I rely on is one of my fundamental rules about repairing anything and that fundamental rule is time changes everything. And what does that mean? Well, that means that as systems and equipment continue to age, the things that happen to them, the things that go wrong, and the amount of work that needs to be done changes along with it. That's why the list of 10 most common things that go wrong with 3303s is not a static list. It changes over time. What was on the list back in 1995 or 1996 is different than what it is today in 2019 because the systems are older than they were when they were almost brand new still. This particular IM3303 from 1995, and it's important to remember that, it has a problem that I cannot remember ever having seen on a 3303. And it's not one of these exotic sort of problems that has to do with a lightning strike in Florida or a flood in South Carolina or mice that chewed on the wires or some other exotic thing that you can't really count on or predict and is very random. This set actually has what would be considered a fairly normal age-related problem. So let's go ahead and power it up and I'll show you what's wrong with it. So I have it hooked up now. I just have a standard antenna. I have it hooked up to my bench power supply. I don't have any remote speakers or anything connected to it because I don't really need to to show you what's wrong with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it up and you'll see the display light up. And it's flashing one o'clock as you would expect. And we can actually set the clock And now it's 505, even though it's not. By all appearances right now, everything seems to be okay. Generally, first check on a system like the 3303. If you can power it up and you get a clock and you can set the times, you're halfway there. All of the remote speakers are all in the radio intercom positions. I have the intercom volume set at an appropriate level. I have the music or system volume set at an appropriate level. Bass and treble will just set in the middle. And we'll turn the loudness on because everybody likes loudness. It gives you a little extra bass in the system. And as you would expect, right now, it's completely silent. You don't hear anything at all. So let's cover that really quick as to why that is, and then we'll get to the actual problem. The 3303 was the very first system that Newtone ever made that has essentially a standby mode. And standby mode means that when the system is not being used, you're not listening to the radio, you're not talking on the intercom, and the doorbell isn't ringing, the amplifier in the system switches off and you don't hear any sounds out of any of the stations whatsoever. And that was done primarily because one of the chronic complaints with intercom systems had been that you would always hear a certain amount of white noise out of the speakers all the time. And if the installation wasn't done very well and the intercom wires ran too close to and parallel with the electrical lines in your house, you'd get a little bit of AC buzz on the system and that always drove people crazy. So to combat that complaint, Newtone came up with this design where it's completely silent. The byproduct of that in this case is we have a system here with a major failure but right now, you would never know. And unless you deliberately go to use the system, it could sit like this for years and you would never know there was anything wrong with it because it doesn't make any noise. So let's go ahead and turn the radio on and you can see what's wrong with it. And no, that's not some weird reception thing and it's picking up RF noise because it's on all the inputs. Auxiliary. 
CD tape. It also shows up if we activate the intercom. So let's go ahead and shut it off because we don't want to kill our poor little 3303 any more than it already is broken. W what is the problem? Where is the giant buzz? Some of you may know already, for those of you who don't, the buzz is from a complete failure in the primary power supply on the back of the 3303. This is not an exotic problem. This is actually a fairly common problem. It happens to all modern electronics at some point or another, especially equipment doesn't matter what it is, whether it's an intercom system or your flat screen TV or anything else that's that's on, on, technically on all the time. The design of the 3303, the system is always on. There is no off switch. It's on to some degree and powered up all the time waiting to be used. Just like your flat screen TV is because you have the blue light around the power button or your DVD player or your Blu-ray player or whatever it is that you have, they're powered up all the time. So as time accumulates on the system, if this one is from 1995, it has more than 200,000 hours on it. And the buzzing noise is from a failure in the primary power supply. Just like the buzzing sound you get on 3003s and 4006s and 5006s and every other model of intercom Newtone has ever made, eventually the primary power supply will fail. This may not seem very interesting to some people, but I actually find it very interesting. As far as I can recall, this is the only IM3303 that I've ever had come through the shop that has a failure in its primary power supply. It's not something that we see on a regular basis. In fact, it's not something that I recall ever having seen before at all. And again, it's not an exotic problem. It's a very fundamental, what I call age-related problem. If this was made in 1995, that means this system is now 24 years old, which is right in the middle of the time that you would expect a system like this to need its first fundamental rebuild. This will not be a difficult rebuild to do. We keep all the parts on hand for it to rebuild the primary power supply anyway because every 3303 that comes through my shop, regardless of what the problem is, it gets a primary power supply rebuild. Why do we do that? We do that because it adds longevity to the repair. It resets the clock back to day one and you begin all over again. And the way I see it is if a customer makes an effort to send me their set to have it repaired for whatever problem it has, we might as well take care of the basics while it's here because then the customer won't have to send it again for a really, really long time unless maybe they have a flood or their house gets hit by lightning. So the real question here is, is this the foretelling of the future of early IM3303s? Are they all going to start to have primary power supply failures at this point basically due to their age or is this just a one-off that skews the tracking that we do on systems to see if this is a problem or not. I don't know yet because I've only seen one. Ask me again in a year or two whether this is an ever-increasing problem or is just just an oddity that happened to fail at this time. I don't really know. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.